We all love Canva, but don't you just wish that it had some of these useful tools? Here are the top missing features that Canva needs to add and some smart workarounds until they arrive. I'm covering my wish list here, but if you add your own to the list in the comments, maybe we could get Canva to develop them for us. I'm Natalia and I help you create better content and grow on social media, so let's do this. Number one for me has to be kerning, which means adjusting the spacing between individual letters. Now, although we do have the the option to adjust the spacing within the whole text box. Sometimes with certain fonts, you just need that extra level of control because improper kerning is one of these things that just separates a polished professional design from one that was designed by an amateur. And I'm probably going to expose myself here, but with using Canva, I just resigned myself to my fate and completely neglect this aspect, which does bother me a bit because there is a workaround, but it's a little laborious, a little tedious. Now to fix this issue, you have to duplicate each text box individually like this, um, and then to adjust the spacing one by one, especially with using keyboard arrows like this, just to gently nudge each of the letters into space to just make the kerning um, a lot better, just like that. So you can see that this is, you know, it works well as a workaround um, when you have very little text, but it is very tedious and it takes a long time. So, um, you know, for this workaround, think headlines, but for anything bigger than this, it just takes way, way too much time. So I really wish that adjusting spacing between individual letters would be available. I mean, you know, if you go back to the text box, um, this is what the letter spacing looks like. So it doesn't really give me anything, <laughs> to be fair. If we go back to the regular text box, you can see that we can, you know, change colors of individual letters, even if we wanted to, or make stuff appeal, appear bold and unbolded. So why not add this extra control with kerning, right? By the way, if you want to play around and test how kerning works, you can actually play this game, which I'll leave the link for in the description box so you can test it out yourself. All right, moving on. If you've ever used Photoshop, you'll know that they have blending modes available in their toolkit, which means that you can blend different layers together in so many creative ways, which is amazing for social media design, for compositing or any other creative work, really. I love adding textures and overlaying multiple images to create something fun and blending modes have always been such an essential feature for me. Unfortunately, Canva doesn't really offer this feature at all and sadly, there's not really a workaround. Sure, for some textures from the Canva library, you can just drop the opacity. So if I just grab this one, this is actually semi-transparent. So if I just kind of rotate it like this and then stretch it out a little bit just to fit my image like that, and maybe then, you know, drop the opacity ever so slightly, this works. But of course, this is quite limited. So you'll notice because of the stock library access that in there are so many different textures, for example, something a bit more grungy like this, and you wouldn't really be able to blend these layers creatively um, within Canva, unfortunately. I mean, again, for this one, it may work, but it is quite limited if you're working with different images. So for example, something like this, it's not necessarily going to work without changing the image underneath. Now, another huge one for me in Photoshop as well has always been the ability to transform any shape or image to change its shape, be it by skewing it, stretching, distorting, warping, you name it. And I still use this feature in Photoshop a lot and I mean it a lot, a lot. So it's one that I'm massively missing in Canva. The workaround here would be to use a variety of apps from the Canva ecosystem, one being uh, Skew, for example. So if I go to apps and go for Skew, you can see Skew image in here, and you can see that it allows you to skew your image horizontally and vertically, but it doesn't take your crop into account, which is not ideal. Now, apart from this, sometimes you want to manipulate the perspective a little bit, which of course is impossible with this one. So you can see that you just end up with something like that and it's hardly ideal. Now, there is another app that's called a reshape. I'll just scroll to another image. So we've got an, another example. So if I go back to my skew search, you can actually see that it suggests reshape, which is much, much, really much closer. And I actually consider it to be um, 
a worthy workaround, if I could call it that. Now, unfortunately, it still doesn't work if you've cropped something. So you can see that this image was cropped. So I would have to, you know, shrink it, make it smaller like this. And it just, you know, it's not perfect. So I've just added an uncropped image and you can see that in here, we're much um, better. So you can use the points in here with the distort option. You can use these points in here to just gently kind of manipulate your shape. And it generally works well, but there are some limitations so let's say I'll go to perspective in here because this is what we were looking for in the skew app and we we're missing it. So if I go for something a little, you know, little bigger like that, it really goes beyond our shape just like that. You can see that if I just move it a little too intensely, it's just going to drag it outside of it. And sometimes I want that more intense, um, you know, intense perspective. So I would have to make this image much bigger so that these limitations of the element itself are are not really, um, you know, making it impossible for me to do it. So I have to make it smaller first then change the perspective. It's not ideal, but still works. Now I couldn't make the warp tool work actually at all. I don't know why it doesn't work for me, but it just doesn't. It distorts it. It doesn't work the same as in Photoshop it would. So there's no workaround for this one, unfortunately. And oh, don't forget to click to save it in here because if you don't and you click away, all your progress is gone. LOL. So what I'm trying to say is that I would love this to be a fully developed feature available natively within Canva and not as a separate app in the apps tab. Now, as a pro user, you can filter the elements to only show the free or the pro ones, which is super useful if you're creating templates or other assets where you have to be mindful of the licensing. But the same feature is not available to free users, meaning every time you want to design something, you have to scroll through thousands of assets only to find the ones without the crown showing. It might have been easier at one point, but with the sheer volume of pro assets available, it's really hard to find the ones that apply to you as a free user. And I get it. They want to encourage you to use the stunning graphics or images that pro creators have to offer or switch to pro altogether. But sometimes you just need the free version and that's okay too. Unfortunately, there's no workaround for this issue either. And I really wish this pro only feature was available to free accounts too. That being said, Canva Pro is well worth the money, the majority of cases, and you get so much packed into the subscription with the beautifully designed templates, a full assets library, and the amazing features that it's worth giving it a try. And you can do so for free for a whole month using the link below. So make sure to test it out yourself and see if getting Pro is worth it to you specifically. Spoiler alert, there's a high chance of that. Staying on the subject of filtering, I wish we could filter by vectors. And if you don't know what they are, don't worry, I'll make it clear just now. Do you know how for some of the elements in the library, you can change the colors here at the top, for example, but for others, you can't? Well, it's because the changeable ones are vectors and the unchangeable ones are raster images. To not complicate things too much, vectors are the type of graphic that is represented with like mathematical formulas, which means that Canva can understand them in a more detailed way. So it shows you the option to change the whole or the particular areas of the graphic. Since raster graphics are more like snapshots, they are frozen the way they were created. I'm trying hard to make it easy to understand, so I'm simplifying massively in here. But that's the reason why Canva won't let you recolor them. All of this is to say that sometimes we just need the option to recolor the graphics from the library, and there's no way to filter through them to find only the changeable ones. So the vectors, you know, I find it particularly difficult with icons. There are some that will be absolutely fine, but some won't give you the option to change. And it will be so frustrating when you find that absolutely perfect one only to then find out that it's the wrong color and you're stuck with it. As a workaround with Mind You works only in some cases, you can use Duotone to recolor your graphic. Now select it, go to edit at the top, and then from the effects panel, choose Duotone. Now you can see a whole lot of different options, but if you choose any of those really or custom in here, you can then see that I can change the shadow or the highlights color. Now for simple icons or graphics just like this, this is perfect because I can just change the highlight like this 
and change the shadow and it recolors it for me. So again, for simple icons, it's absolutely perfect. And there are certain graphics that just, you know, it won't work for it at all. So in here, for example, you can see that I could use duotone, but what it does is just it, it gives me two colors instead of the multitude of colors that we initially had. Like, is this perfect? Of course not, but it could maybe work for something that I would prefer to find something like this. Maybe I could make it work, but it, it won't work at all for certain cases. So yes, if I may suggest a feature, filtering by vectors would be one. Now picture this, you design a graphic, position everything just the way you like, and then you think to yourself, this one's missing some depth. So you want to add a shadow naturally. You go to edit, find shadows, and then add a drop shadow only to see that your element is now repositioned. When you adjust to create more distance, for example, just like that, it just shrinks the image even more or moves it around. Oh, and I should also mention if you cropped an image before like this one, forget it. The shadow just gets unnaturally cut off in here and it also tries to move it around. All of it because the shadow in Canva resides within the boundaries of the element, you know, the ones you see with the purple outline again and not outside of it. This is the number one reason why I actually preferred the shadows in the old photo editor and you can see exactly what I mean in this video right here. And it causes a whole host of issues. Now here there are a couple of workarounds. The first one is simple. Think of shadows earlier, right? And I wish I always did, but in reality that's just not how the creative process works sometimes. For the ones that get repositioned and mess up your layout, you can actually just duplicate the element like this and use the other one almost like a placeholder. And then when you actually change your shadow just like this and you kind of finalize what you want it to look like, like say this is what I want. I can then use this placeholder as a guide for me to be able to resize it just to make it positioned um, perfectly like that. So I would just do something like this a little bit and drag it to the sides and maybe then crop it from the bottom um, just to, you know, fit this whole layout like this. For cropped elements, things are a little more complicated, but there is a way here too. Just copy the element as a standalone to an empty page and then download it as a PNG and a transparent one if needed. Then you can just re-upload it back into Canva. I've actually just done that in here. So you've got it as a standalone element, um, just like this. And you can now add this shadow on to it in here and it will work just as your regular shadow like this. Of course, it is a bit clunky, but hey, it does work if we need it. And for some simpler shapes, actually this one would work. You can actually just go to elements and search for shadows and then you'll find loads of varieties that you can just pop underneath your image. So I can just make this one smaller like this, maybe just nudge it into position a little bit underneath my image and then just maybe drop the opacity a little bit and that's one way to create that shadow effect as well and they're quite versatile as well as you can see circles different kind of blobs and different shapes in here to um, you know to make it look a little bit more natural now you know how you can favor elements that you like by adding a star to them and then they all land in your start folder for super easy access yeah well i want that but for fonts there are so many fonts out there that i love or discover and want to save for the future and there's no way to keep them somewhere as my favorite. That's one feature that I'm definitely missing in Canva. A workaround here would be to add a font to your brand kit but it's far from ideal because you want to keep your brand guidelines secure without unnecessary mess and two there's a limit to how many you can actually add in here so we are a little stuck here. I believe a huge part of designing efficiently in Canva is keeping it nice and organized. And that's why folders are so important. Everything should be neatly stashed away in designated folders so they can easily be found. And I talk about this exactly in this video, you can learn how to do it and why you should do it too. But when I open an old design with an uploaded image, there's no way for me to tell which folder it's in. Now, my memory is pretty good and the way I structured my folders means I know exactly where they are, but I think it would still be useful to be able to right click it and see the folder. I mean, now when you right click it and go to info, you see its full name. So provided that it has a name that's not untitled or image or this jumble like this, you would be able to actually go to 
to the home page and search for it from here like this and it would be found. So it is a bit of a workaround, but if not, then there is just no way of realizing where this asset lives. Yet another reason why naming your designs or assets is so important, which I talk about in that other video as well. Now, I find it funny that I can actually move this asset to a specific folder from here, but there is no tab to actually indicate where it is now. Now, I would love to see a little gray box here underneath the name, just in here, just like I would see on the homepage of Canva or within my projects, just to indicate where that folder is and which folder it lives in. Now, one of the biggest reasons why I don't use the content planner in Canva is because you cannot schedule posts from one design there. For some formats, I prefer to keep one design with all the different types of posts there almost as a master template. Currently, you can only schedule one whole post and there's no way to schedule more from the same design. I find it particularly bothersome when I generate multiple posts in one design using bulk create because that's literally how it works. It all goes into one design. I would then have to copy each individual page to a separate new design to be able to schedule it out, which really beats the point. That's clearly not a workaround if you have 10, 30, 50, pages to a design. So on my wish list, there goes the option to schedule multiple posts for from one design. And also I would add scheduling to TikTok in here, having multiple calendars, multiple sets of accounts, and frankly, a few more other options to make the content planner much, much more usable to content creators or social media managers. Now, this one is the biggest feature I'm hoping to see soon in Canva, and it's the ability to have multiple size pages or artboards in one design. Sometimes, especially as marketers or content creators, we need to create a series of designs for, say, a campaign and need a variety of sizes. It would be so useful to not have to jump from one design to the other, copying stuff over constantly. It's just not as efficient. There's not really a workaround here apart from like having a whole folder dedicated to the particular campaign. So unfortunately, this is not available, but I wish Canva just gave us this option. It would be amazing. Now, when I was preparing for this video and this idea was actually sitting on my board for some weeks now, I had automatic captions or subtitles for videos on this list as my absolute number one. And to my surprise, captions were actually announced with the Droptober features. Being able to add automatically transcribed and fully editable captions with my own fonts, colors, and styles is such an important feature. And I couldn't be happier that it's actually launched. So watch this video next to find out what new Canva updates are coming with Droptober and there are some real bangers in there. Now drop me a comment to tell me which features you'd love to see in Canva and hit that like button so that we can reach the Canva team with our wish list. Oh and believe me they listen. Subscribe for more content like this. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.